Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Simon Coles, Philip Tate, and Brett McCall. The question I want to ask, do disagreements always have to be resolved? Philip, can you kick us off, please? Sure, Robin. I guess I'd start by saying I think reasonable people can agree to disagree, uh, mm. but invariably we, we end up dealing with conflict. And as long as you can resolve it, hopefully in a healthy way, I think it, it certainly helps you develop understanding of the other person. Hopefully you're building some trust along the way. Uh, obviously, we're all trying to strengthen relationships, things of that nature. But I always go into it with, with the opinion of reasonable people can agree to disagree. Mm. Okay. Uh, I, th I think it would be one of those where I might argue with the question a little bit. When do disagreements have to be resolved? Because mm. mm. clearly they don't. If you disagree with somebody on an internet forum that you don't know and have no relationship with, pff, doesn't matter. If you disagree with your spouse, that's going to need some careful handling. You, you might agree to disagree or you might come to some sort of reconciliation. Yeah, the context I think is important. I was hoping that by now, there would be something I could disagree with, but I, I haven't had anything to disagree with yet. So I will say that alignment seems more important to me than just than agreement in the context, Simon, of what you were saying. Like if I'm in a long term relationship, business relationship or you know, any other kind of long term, like I'm going to see you beyond this point. Mm. then I think we need alignment. We need to know that we're both going in the same direction. We know what our intentions are and then there's room for disagreement. In fact, I think when disagreement happens, that's the opportunity for curiosity. That's the mm -hmm. opportunity to learn something, to be open to a possibility and, and seeing something that doesn't exist yet. Yeah, when I do trainings, I often will say, if no one's disagreeing, someone is lying. It, you have to have disagreement. And, and I think the, the thing for me that came up with this is what does resolved mean? So mm -hmm. I have people in my past who are in my past with whom I've had disagreements that I have no intention of addressing. Is that disagreement resolved? Yes, I don't deal with it ever. <laughs> well, after many years in the agency business, I, I can tell you that working with, with creative people, someone like me who may be in a communications role or an account management role or, or something like that, I, I'm a linear thinker. I'm an organized guy. That left brain, right brain thing gets in the way sometimes. And I think you have to learn, you have to have what good ingredients to make a tasty stew, right? So you, you want to have people that, that disagree as long as it's done in a respectful manner. And hopefully to Brett's point, if you're aligned, you're moving forward. The, the goal is to create the best work possible, whether it's a creative project or a, or a campaign or a program, what have you. If there's not a certain amount of tension, if there's not a certain amount of spice in that recipe, I think you, you run the risk of not producing the best possible work. So, so is it a sign of a good knowledge worker, should we say, that you can have a disagreement and use it as an opportunity rather than something that has to be resolved because otherwise the world's not all right. That's curious. I, I am I'm a little, I'm wanting to look at, okay, disagreement is what we're talking about. But if we talk about agreements in our lexicon, we're using the term agreement all the time. Like at the beginning of uh, engagement, we have agreements. We don't have alignments, which I think maybe is a, might be a better word for it. We're all going to align around being respectful, listening to each other. Like those are great alignments. I don't know that, I, that anyone would disagree with those though. I don't know. I, maybe I'm um, painting myself into a corner there, but the whole notion of do we need to resolve disagreements? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I'm a little bit stumped there with what it even means to resolve a disagreement. I think we're all identifying that it's healthy to have them. It's health, mm -hmm. healthy to have differing opinions about what we can agree upon. Well, maybe the damaging thing is holding on to drama. We've disagreed and I'm holding on to some emotion about that. And I'm going to let that emotion color the rest of our interactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm not a big drama guy. Uh, generally, but I've seen how it can be effective to the earlier point. If you're developing a creative campaign or something like that, uh, you need to have a certain amount of give and take and, and challenging concepts or challenging things in order to produce the best possible work at the end of the game. So, or the end of that process. So, so anyway, I, I, I think it, it requires respect. I think it requires open and honest communication for you to have a chance to reach the ultimate finish line, whatever that might be. 
And in a marketing campaign, you might want to create something that purposefully creates disagreement and, and polarizing because that's what creates the drama. But I know in my personal life, I don't want any of that polarizing disagreement drama stuff. Mm. I either want to resolve it or decide, okay, we're going to agree to disagree. And there are people in my life where I don't talk about certain subjects because I'm not interested in having that argument. And there are some people, like I said, who just aren't in my life because there's nothing I want to talk to them about. It's interesting. Uh, I would say I can think about a fellow I used to work with and and he was a great, great creative partner. And so certainly we were kind of came from different sides of the brain, if you will. But we kind of agreed we're not going to talk about religion and we're not going to talk about politics because we were it, it just produced tension in a very negative way and it just wasn't positive. Mm. But we were able to get past that and kind of state the rules of engagement, if you will. And and it we were still able to be effective as teammates. So I I, that makes me sad. What makes you sad? The, 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 in order to be in a relationship with somebody, creative or otherwise, you have to not talk about certain subjects. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, it makes yeah, my life so just... much easier with some people in my life. I don't think it's healthy. If, if, if you can't have a curious debate and respectful discussion about, about a topic, what else is going on inside that relationship? What other things mm -hmm. are... That would be my my view. Okay, so we're gonna have a disagreement. Yay! Um, <laughs> if I have someone in my life who has to be part of it, we can talk about it. But we're talking about the we're disagreement. About That's yes. the point. <laughs> if I have someone in my life who can't have a healthy relationship, isn't capable of having a good, comfortable disagreement, and I choose to keep them in my life. Do I have to have uncomfortable disagreements with them for it to be healthy, or can I just say, okay, you can't have that conversation, and I don't want to? Well, I just, I managed to edit those people out of my life, I think is the short version. And that, that's kind of your choice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brett, you're over there thinking, I see the smoke, oh, well, what's I, going I, on? I mean, I, I'm completely with Simon that it is sad to omit certain categories of topics that we are establishing that we aren't, aren't going to address. And I, and I have those relationships in my life. There's certainly relationships where there there is an establishment of no talking about religion and, and politics are probably the two most common money is another one that's up there but like the fact that we don't talk about those limits some of the opportunity that we could have a disagreement about them and and yeah. have a healthy debate i think tension is what makes stories interesting when that tension is healthy there's something really powerful that can be birthed like there's something new that's available to happen in that space i'm also a natural disruptor and a natural visionary and so constantly i'm in a position where i'm imagining something that doesn't yet exist that is a disagreement with the current reality mm. so i'm perpetually looking for that way to disrupt in a way that creates healthy tension and actually gets people moving towards something that they might not feel comfortable with or agree to. Also, if you don't talk about, say, politics or religion, that's really dangerous because all that means is people end up in these entrenched positions where they only talk to people who agree with them. They're incapable of having a debate and we end up with the mess that is politics in the Western world right now. Absolutely. And then in the end, people die. And I agree we, with that, you know, and it's not my responsibility to take on everyone in their politics. See, I, I think it might be, and oh. we can disagree with that. I think if, if somebody holds views which are abhorrent to the people around them, they should be challenged. And okay, so if I have someone in my life, family, otherwise, who has some level of authority, who I ha think has abhorrent views that are bad for other people in the, in, but they can make my life absolutely miserable. Why would I go into that battle? I'd get myself out of the situation where they can make my life miserable because if they've got abhorrent views, you're next. Mm -hmm. If that's an option, absolutely. But, it, but in every country that we live in, there are those people. Mm -hmm. We all live among them. Mm -hmm. I am one of them to somebody else. I think to Simon's point, by not discussing them we are sweeping under the rug and potentially creating something that will present itself one way or another and and probably not in a, a way that we can more easily manage if we were then if we were talking mm. about it openly
Yeah. And what a fun way to end a 10 minute conversation about disagreements <laughs> is having one. I'm yeah. loving it. Thanks great. so much, guys. I appreciate it. And I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon.